Hello, friends. Welcome to my channel. I wish all of you good health. Let's start today's video. Introduction. Today, we will talk about why you must reverse prediabetes. Even if you think this topic doesn't concern you, please pay close attention because most people with prediabetes don't know they have it. This is crucial because 70% of people with prediabetes will develop type 2 diabetes within the next 10 years. That progression is consistent and predictable once it starts. Type 2 diabetes is a major factor in many serious health conditions, including cardiovascular disease, stroke, cancer, and even dementia. The prevalence of diabetes. To give you an idea of how widespread this problem is, there are 35 million people with type 2 diabetes in the United States alone. Globally, that number soars to an astounding 540 million people. But what about those who are at risk of becoming diabetic? Remember, 70% of those with prediabetes will develop diabetes in the next decade. In the US, that's potentially 100 million people. Worldwide, using the same ratio, we might have around 1.6 billion people with prediabetes, in addition to the half billion already diagnosed with diabetes. A global health crisis. If we consider the world's population of 8 billion people, there's a significant percentage who are not optimally healthy. Beyond those already diagnosed with diabetes or prediabetes, many more are in the early stages of metabolic problems. This group could include another 4 billion people who aren't yet diabetic, but are heading in that direction. This means that roughly 6 billion people worldwide are not metabolically healthy, putting them at risk of diabetes in the future. Human and financial costs. On one hand, we have the immense human suffering caused by diabetes and its complications. On the other hand, there's a significant financial burden. In the US, diabetes care costs about $400 billion annually, and globally the cost is estimated at $1 trillion. Total healthcare costs in the US amount to $4.5 trillion, and since diabetes is linked to many other diseases, a large portion of these costs can be attributed to diabetes-related care. Understanding pre-diabetes and diabetes. To effectively address this issue, we need to understand what pre-diabetes and diabetes are. Essentially, they are forms of insulin resistance. When you eat carbohydrates, your blood sugar rises and your body releases insulin to help glucose move from your bloodstream into your cells. When this system functions well, everything is fine. However, if you overwhelm this system, it can become less effective, leading to carbohydrate intolerance. This intolerance is what pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes are. Measuring insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is measured along a continuum, not as a simple on-off condition. The most common measure is hemoglobin A1c, which reflects a three-month average of blood glucose levels. If you are highly insulin sensitive, your A1c will be 5.3 or less. As you become less sensitive, your A1c will increase. At 5.7, you are considered pre-diabetic, and at 6.5, you have type 2 diabetes. The problem with current measurements, the challenge is that small changes in A1c levels can indicate significant metabolic changes, yet these changes are often hard to detect because the numbers are so similar. For example, moving from an A1c of 5.3 to 5.5 involves significant metabolic shifts, but this difference is minimal in traditional measurements. This is why early detection is difficult, and why focusing solely on blood glucose can be misleading. Measuring insulin levels can provide a more accurate picture of metabolic health. The role of insulin. In healthy individuals, fasting insulin levels should be around 3. As insulin resistance develops, these levels can increase significantly, even if blood glucose levels remain relatively stable. By the time someone is diagnosed with prediabetes or diabetes, their insulin levels may be much higher, indicating a serious problem. This is because the body works hard to keep blood glucose within a narrow range, masking the underlying issues. Causes of prediabetes and diabetes there are several causes of insulin resistance and prediabetes. Excess carbohydrate intake. Not all carbs are equal. Sugar and fructose are the worst offenders, especially fructose, which is processed through the liver like alcohol. High glycemic foods, processed foods and starchy foods can also contribute to insulin resistance.
Fatty liver. Excess sugar is a primary cause of fatty liver, which interferes with insulin regulation. Fatty liver used to be associated with alcohol, but now it's mostly caused by fructose. Excess food intake, especially processed foods, can also lead to fatty liver. Three. Chronic stress. Stress increases cortisol levels, which raise blood sugar and insulin levels, leading to insulin resistance. Stress also increases inflammation and cravings for sugary foods. 4. Inflammation. Inflammation disrupts insulin signaling pathways. Processed seed oils found in many vegetable oils are highly oxidized and contribute to inflammation. Other sources include processed foods, chronic stress, lack of exercise, dysbiosis and environmental toxins. 5. Microbiome imbalance. A healthy microbiome is crucial for metabolic health. Antibiotics, environmental toxins, processed foods and artificial sweeteners can disrupt the microbiome, leading to insulin resistance. Sedentary lifestyle. Lack of exercise contributes to insulin resistance. Regular physical activity reduces obesity, insulin resistance, inflammation and stress while improving microbiome balance and sleep. Genetics. Genetic predisposition can play a role in insulin resistance, but lifestyle factors are more significant. Focusing on epigenetics, how you express your genes through lifestyle choices, can mitigate genetic risks. Aging. Insulin resistance tends to increase with age, but lifestyle choices can influence how you age and manage your metabolic health. Poor sleep. Insufficient or poor quality sleep raises cortisol levels, increasing stress, inflammation, blood sugar, insulin and cravings. Medications. Certain medications like corticosteroids, antipsychotics, beta blockers, diuretics, statins and hormonal contraceptives can contribute to insulin resistance. What you can do. To combat prediabetes and diabetes, start by measuring your baseline insulin levels and getting blood work to assess your overall health. Consider testing inflammatory and cardiovascular markers like NMR, lipoprotein, CRP and homocysteine. If lifestyle changes alone don't yield results, analyse your microbiome through DNA sequencing to understand the balance of good and bad bacteria. Measuring omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acid ratios can also provide valuable insights. Here are some actionable steps to improve your metabolic health. Exercise regularly. Incorporate physical activity into your daily routine to reduce insulin resistance and improve overall health. Manage stress. Practice relaxation techniques like meditation and deep breathing to lower cortisol levels and reduce inflammation. Eat real food. Focus on whole, unprocessed foods. Avoid processed and packaged foods, sugar and white flour. Limit meal frequency. Aim for one to three meals per day without snacking to improve insulin sensitivity. Monitor carbohydrate. Intake. Reduce carbohydrate consumption, especially high glycemic and processed foods. Consider low-carb or ketogenic diets if necessary. Prioritize quality protein and fats. Consume moderate amounts of high-quality protein and natural fats. Avoid commercial oils and opt for healthier alternatives like olive oil, avocado oil and nuts. Conclusion By understanding the causes of prediabetes and making proactive lifestyle changes, you can improve your metabolic health and reduce your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Remember, the key is to address the root causes and make sustainable changes to your diet, exercise and stress management routines. If you found this video helpful, please like and share it with your friends and family who need this information. Please subscribe to our channel for more insightful health tips and updates. Your support is important for us to continue providing valuable content. You can also show appreciation and support for our work by clicking the join and thanks buttons below the video with a small token. Your journey to better health is a shared one and together we can uplift each other towards wellness and a life full of movement and joy. Remember, your body is capable of remarkable healing, given the chance and the right support. Treat it with care, patience and love. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye bye.